All right, look what all came in the mail. We have the uh, WWVB receiver, the MSP430 chip I plan to use. We have the uh, the connectors, which are very hard to find and very pretty expensive, or very expensive. And also the circuit cards. So let's take these apart and start looking at them. We'll start at, with the MSP430 and start putting it together. All right, I'm gonna apologize because I don't have a good stand. I'm trying to use a better camera this time around, but it's just my cell phone. So um, anyway, there's a bunch of stuff that comes kind of standard in the kit. Meh. All right, this is the good stuff. Here's the MSP430. This is the FR4133, which is the kit that I decided to use because, well, there's a clock on it and LCD, so there's a clock and there's a little uh, receiver indicator on there for, uh, for uh, so that I know that I've locked on to the signal. Um, so that's what I'm trying to use. How cool is that? I mean, there's probably lots of view reviews of this online if you really want to see them. Um, maybe I'll try and remember to put a link up here somewhere. So there you go. All right, I hope you're okay with me trying a couple of different things to see what works best for recording this. These are those really expensive connectors that are very long. And they are 2 by 40 so, or 2 by 10 so each one of them has uh, 20 pins on them. But this board requires two of them, so it's kind of an interesting part. I'm not going to open them up, but let's make sure you're seeing them there a little bit. So you see how those pins, they're like uh, 2 deep by 40 You know what? Let me do open them up so you can kind of see what they look like. These are not the most exciting things, but that's the main part of the project is connecting to the MSP430. And really, the most expensive part on most boards are the connectors. And finding the right connectors can be difficult. And using the right connectors you know, is sometimes difficult. But you see how hopefully you're getting that. Yeah, looks like it. And see how they're 2x10. Well, that's enough of that. They're connectors, I mean. They're connectors. But, alright. And then I also got a bunch of parts from DigiKey here that I won't go through every single part. But here's like the big uh, filter caps. So, you know, lots of parts. Those are always fun. Here's the big one though. This is what we want to see. Pull out my exacto knife. This is the fun part. The unboxing of the WWV receiver. Or the unboarding, I guess. So Oshpark's a great little service. I've used them. This is my second time now, I think. Um, there's some things I like about their boards. There's some things I don't like about their boards. But generally speaking, they are pretty good boards. Here's that big filter cap we were talking about. This is where the antenna will connect. And then this JFET is the first input stage. And then stage two is going to be this centered around this op amp. And stage three is centered around this op amp. And this. Uh, uh, digipot so pretty cool um, I did realize one thing while I was uh, sleeping the other day oh shoot I thought this was a 40 pin part and it's not oh you know what I ordered the wrong one there's two of them one with the the 20 pins and one with the 40 pins Whoopsie, I made a mistake. Darn. 
Um, the other thing I was concerned about was, uh, let's see, where are these connectors? Let's pull them out now. Is if when I solder this breadboard together, okay, this breadboard's going to look something like this. If when I solder this breadboard together, come on, baby, there you go. When I solder this breadboard together, how is it going to connect to this guy, and is it going to short out the? Uh, short out the antenna connectors right here to the digital connectors on the bottom I hadn't even thought about that and you know since the board doesn't go all the way down I think it's okay see there's hopefully you can see that there there's maybe like a uh, eighth of an inch of clearance in there maybe something like that so I think this will work it's probably not ideal. If I lay out this board again, I'll probably move this connector up just a hair. So, yeah. Another thing that didn't turn out great is that this reset button isn't hooked up properly. Um, isn't quite exactly lined up on that hole. So there's another thing that could probably be improved just a little bit. But... Generally speaking, this is going to be awesome for prototyping. It looks like I have to go return this to DigiKey or just live with having uh, this uh, connector that I really don't need or something um, because I really wanted the 40 pin version of the LCD screen. So I also, maybe they sent the wrong one. Um, so I need to look into that kind of a bummer but that's what you deal with sometimes when you're doing this sort of stuff so pretty cool um, I'm gonna need to build one of these up here shortly in order to meet some deadlines that I have so I am going to go ahead and build one of these up and uh, probably just build one of them up today I don't really like to use all the parts I need in case there's like some sort of catastrophic thing that doesn't work quite well. So I can replace that catastrophic thing. Um, so let's go ahead and start building up the board. It's pretty cool though, right? I mean, you see the general idea there. Okay, so I want to show you how I do this. Um, everybody does this a little bit different. I printed out my bill of materials. These hundreds should be one hundreds, not a hundred dollars. See, uh, one hundred. Okay. So same thing here. This should be one hundred ohms. See, it's the same exact same part number. Somehow I got it formatted wrong. But I changed it so the next time I print it, it won't be formatted wrong. Um, but I just want to show you how I do this now. Everybody does it differently. Here's the bag that I've been using for this particular JFET. Here, let me turn off this light, see if that clear. Goes down a little bit, maybe. All right, so what I do is I read this PF5102, then I find this PF5102, and then with a pencil, I write Q1 on this label. So there's Q1, hopefully you can see that, maybe. There's Q1. Okay. And then I'll have that ready to go when I go to populate it. And then when I go to actually populate the board, I'll start with the smaller pieces. So I'll probably start with the op amps and stuff and the linear regulator. And then I build out to the bigger pieces. So that's how I usually do it. Your mileage might vary, but that's how I do it. Um and oh and then one important point is i also mark off somehow q1 so that i know i've inventoried that part and i've marked it so that when i do it 
use it. So another important point is I always buy extras. Always, always, always buy extras. So, you know, this might not always be Q1. It might change to something. So that's why I use pencil on the label. Um, and then I usually keep a box full of all the parts for that particular project. So, uh, and I usually use the DigiKey parts that I get. That way, um, the project is all kind of organized. Um, I usually keep a copy of this, the schematic, any other paperwork that I might, excuse me, any other paperwork I might have with the engineering. So that's how I usually go about building up a board. So there we go. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place the... Uh, the op amps on the board first. I mean, they're the smallest part, really. Um, one thing I try and do is I always place the decoupling caps actually on first. Um, it just kind of helps uh, with decoupling, but it also provides sometimes some ESD support. Um, I'm fortunate to have an ESD bench, so I don't really need it, but it's always kind of a good practice. Um, to kind of place those parts first when you're doing it by hand. So that's what I'll do. The way I do it, I don't have a good enough setup to really show you how I do it. But So the parts I'm going to place are this one here. Oh, let's get a pointer. Are this one here, U1, and U3. So I'm going to pl place those parts first. But before I place those parts, I'm actually going to place the cap here and the cap here first. And what that does is provide some decap decoupling and some additional uh, ESD protection. It's not a lot. I'm not going to claim it's a lot, but it's just a little bit. And it probably doesn't work that well. But some of the app notes I've read on FPGAs and stuff imply that they can help a lot. So it's just something I've always kind of done. Makes it easy anyway. Alright, so I started building this and I realized I should have waited to place this part until after I had placed these parts. Um, because, see, the orientation of the part is going this way. It's going to make it real hard to solder those four pins on that far side. Um, and so when I started to solder this uh, op amp down, I thought about that same thing. So. I thought, okay, I can place these here, and then it'll be easy to place those and this. So that's kind of how you start building the board, at least by hand. That's how I do it. And sometimes, you know, I, I mess up something somewhere here or there. But, um, but that's real important for stuff like this. And uh, just to be able to solder it down, keep it looking nice and stuff. So... Uh, that's another thing to think about when you're building these boards. Okay, so this is getting to be the board. I have done all the small parts on this board. So all the 0603s, all the uh, integrated circuits, and this one uh, FET here, MOSFET. What still needs to be done is the JFET, the big filter cap on the front end, um, and the connectors. Then this board's done. I need to clean it, so that's about it. Here's another shot from up top. Just to see how the board looks. Cool. Alright, so I'm getting real close to having this board done. But I just want to make a point here, is when you're putting these pin headers on, you can get a little misalignment going in this direction. Now this is a uh, 40 pin MSP 430, a spare one I had from another project that I have. Um, so when you go to put this guy on, they should all line up. And it might be difficult to do with just one hand, but I think you can probably get the general idea if I can get it on there. Sorry for the shaky video. So there's that side, and then you gotta be more gentle to get the other side. Sometimes you gotta look down here, and lift up. Oh, you know what? 
I'll be right back. All right, so there you go. That's what it will look like when it's put on. Now I still have to solder it on, but that's the basic idea of what it'll look like. So looks pretty good. Let's go solder the connectors on. It just helps to align it so that you know you can fit it on most other boards. So it's kind of an alignment tool, those MSP430s. So. All right, so here's the final product of the board. Looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I got the connectors on, soldered on. Looks pretty good. All the parts uh, set for this connector here are below this connector, which is my main intent to be able to put some Wi-Fi modules of some sort on right here be able to display the time on the better MSP430 board there and then uh, have the antenna here and then a radio board on top of that so there you go it's at least built I don't know if it's working yet so that's the next step but I wanted to do a build I needed to get a build done for a demonstration I'm doing um, and uh, I got some other things going on this week. It's my birthday and my daughter's birthday this week. So uh, we're busy with a lot of things. But I'm going to try and put this video together this week and try and get it out to you guys. But this project is moving right along, which I'm very excited about. So maybe we'll use this board. I did realize that I ordered the wrong board. So I don't know if I'm going to send it back to DigiKey or try and use it or exactly what I want to do quite yet but um, I am able to start working on this project and start getting it going um, at least with this board because I got all 40 pins and in theory I should be able to use all 40 pins in the same manner um, but I haven't checked this board specifically um, because I really intended to use it with a different board, but that's where we are with the project. The board's built. I have a couple more boards here. I'm trying to figure out what to do with those. I'll probably build one of those by individual stages and kind of test each individual stage for you guys. So here and then here and then here. Well, that's the uh, reference voltage, but test each individual stage for you guys. So that you guys can see, oh, sorry, I popped my knuckle. Um, so you guys can see what each individual stage does, and maybe you would do like a whiteboard demonstration and stuff like that. So, anyway, I just wanted to keep this video short, show you what the board looks like when it's all built up. Um, that's always kind of an exciting time in any project is to get that first board in. So, there's some test points that are still gold plated which are perfect for being able to probe into each stage and see what it's doing specifically and uh, you, you know and getting very good connections to the board so there's a couple things I learned on the board for instance I had used the hand place parts for all the resistors and stuff I didn't really like that the uh, the spacing between uh, each pin of each part was a little too far for my taste maybe with the exception of the ICs but for the resistors and the capacitors they were just spaced a little too far and the pads went out a little too far as well so you know obviously I can really reduce the footprint of this if I were to uh, remove a lot of the silk screen and stuff really a silk screen takes a lot of room and something like this um, so if I was able to remove the silk, silk screen, that sure would save a lot of room. Anyway, I think it's looking pretty good. And we are well on our way to having a WWVB receiver. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.